2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Let's read verse 18 together. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Ready? Read. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so we've been on this series, The Unseen Realm, most of the year, looking at the realm that is invisible, the spirit realm. And we've pulled back that curtain and, and endeavored to get a better understanding of what goes on in that, that realm, how it works, so that we can benefit from it. Because we understand that what happens in the unseen realm impacts our lives. Amen? Amen? Some of the things that go on in our lives are a direct result of what's happening in that unseen realm. And so we need to understand how that realm works. And so we're on this, this subject now called the force of faith. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. And the 11th chapter of Hebrews verse 3 says this, by faith... We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So this verse tells us that the seen realm was created by the unseen realm. Amen. That what created what we see was something we can't see. And what we can't see that created what we do see is God. But this verse says he created it by faith. Amen. Amen. Faith was the force that God used to create everything we see. So the invisible God used the invisible force of faith to create the worlds, to create the solar system, to create the, the, the stars and the sun and the moon and to create us. So we've been looking at the unseen force of faith and we pointed out that Ephesians chapter 1 says that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So all of the blessings that God has for us reside in that unseen realm. Amen. And if my stuff in the unseen realm, I want to know how to get my stuff. I don't know about you, but I want my stuff. My stuff in the unseen realm, so I need to know how to get it. James chapter 1 talks about that we won't receive anything from God if we don't ask in faith. Amen? So faith takes the invisible and makes it visible. Faith transfers the spiritual blessings that God has blessed us with already out of the unseen realm into the seen realm. Last week we started looking at seven important things that you need to know about faith. And I'll run through the four that we went through last week. I ain't got time to preach that again. So if you want to get it, you can buy a CD. You can go on our YouTube channel. It's on the YouTube channel. It's still up there on Facebook. If you want to get that, there's plenty of ways for you to get it. Amen. So I ain't re-preaching it. I'm just going to go over it real quick. So the first thing that, we, that you and I need to know about faith is that faith determines what we get from God. And we use Mark chapter 6 where it said Jesus was in his hometown and it made the interesting statement that he could do no mighty works. It didn't say he wouldn't do them, it said he couldn't do them. So here you have all-powerful Jesus and he can't do mighty works. He wants to do them, but he can't. And then the next verse said, he marveled at their unbelief. So their lack of faith hindered what he wanted to do in their lives. And we have this false, this false notion, this erroneous notion that if it's God's will, it'll happen. That, that's not, that doesn't stand up to biblical scrutiny. If it's God's will and we have faith, it'll happen. Amen. God's will, no faith, no happening. So the first thing is that our faith determines what we receive from God. The second thing that we talked about last time is that faith is measurable. In other words, there isn't just one level of faith that everybody has. 
The Bible talked about in Acts chapter 6, it talked about Stephen. It says Stephen was full of faith. So if Stephen can be full of faith, then Stephen can be not full of faith. Amen? So faith is measurable. It's levels. The Bible talked about in Romans chapter 4 that there's strong faith and weak faith. So if there can be strong faith and weak faith, it's measurable. It's not all the same. By, uh, Jesus taught, told the disciples, he said, oh, you of little faith. Amen. So faith is measurable. It's not just one level of faith that you have, and that's just it. The third thing that we talked about is the truth that faith is exercised in different areas. In other words, there's not just one type of faith. And we often treat it like it's faith. And when we say, I'm a person of strong faith, what we really mean often is my faith in Jesus is strong. But you know, faith in Jesus and faith for healing is not the same. You can have strong faith in Jesus and have no faith for healing. You follow what I'm saying? You can have strong faith in Jesus and strong faith for healing and have no faith for finances. So faith is in different areas and we can't treat it like it's all one thing and a lot of times we get confused because we don't understand because we consider ourselves a person of strong faith but we're not able to get healed well you got strong faith in Jesus but your faith for healing may not be where your faith for Jesus you can have you can be an eight in faith for Jesus and a two in faith for healing amen the last thing we talked about last time was that faith has to be maintained. In other words, once you have faith, you don't just give up and quit. And we looked at the Bible, we looked at all kind of verses that talked about that, that, that people's faith had, um, there's a, a verse that said people's faith had been shipwrecked. There's a verse that talked about people departed from the faith. There's a verse that talk, Jesus talked about little faith. So faith, you have to maintain it. It's not just I got faith and that's just it. And that includes, and we looked at all these scriptures last week. If you want to get it, you got to get it. But that this also is true. Anybody ever heard the doctrine that once you save, you always save? They call it eternal security. That's not a biblical principle. Because faith has to be maintained. Amen. And so we looked at that. So that was the last thing we looked at last time. So this today we want to pick up and talk about the last three things, important things that you need to know about faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to know this. Now look back at him and say, don't talk to me like that. It's mind your own business. I'm just joking. <laughs> Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and we'll look at the fifth thing most important thing that you need or fifth important thing you need to know about faith 1st Thessalonians chapter 1 2nd Thessalonians I'm sorry 2nd Thessalonians chapter 1 when you get to 2nd Thessalonians chapter 1 say praise the Lord so I want to read just one verse that's verse 3 and learn something else important about faith. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you abound toward each other. So this verse gives us another insight about faith, and that is that faith grows. Amen. Not only can our faith grow, our faith must grow. Amen. Our faith must grow. And so Paul is commending them because their faith is growing exceedingly. Amen. Now flip back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In the 10th chapter of 2 Corinthians, I want to look at, I'll start in verse 14. Well, I'll just read verse 15. Not boasting of things beyond measure, that is, in other man's labors, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. So Paul is saying that he wants their faith to increase. Our faith not only can grow, can increase, it must grow 
it must increase if we want to receive what God has for us. Amen? So the fifth most important thing we need to know is that faith grows. And, and we need to understand, because faith grows, turn to uh, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I want to show you something. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. In the third chapter of 1 Thessalonians, um, I'm going to look at, I'll start in verse 9. For what thanks can we render to God for you? For all the joy with which we rejoice for your sakes before our God. Verse 10 is what I want to get to. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. Did you know things could be lacking in our faith? And the reason things could be lacking is because it grows. Amen. And as our faith grows, there's less and less that lacks. But because it grows, when I first got saved, my faith in Jesus was lacking some stuff. Amen. I was saved. I was good and saved, and I would have went straight to heaven. But there were things that were lacking in my faith, and yours too. But as our faith grows... There are fewer and fewer things that lack in our faith. So what this means is, in the area of healing, we can have things lacking in our faith. That's why it has to grow. Amen. In the area of finances, we can have things lacking in our faith. I have some faith, but, th but it, there's some, lack, some things lacking in my faith. And that's why it has to grow so that those things that are lacking can be made up. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, your faith can grow. Faith can grow. Now look back at them, point at them with the, one of them accusatory points and say, your faith must grow. And not only can our, and our faith can grow in specific areas. Amen. If your faith grows in this area, that doesn't mean it's, it's automatically growing in that area. Amen. Your faith in Jesus for salvation could be growing, but your faith for healing could be stagnant. So it's not just growth, but it's growth in areas. Again, we can't treat faith like it's all one thing. Like my faith in Jesus is not going to get me healed. I need faith for healing to get healed. Amen. When I got saved, I had faith in Jesus. I knew nothing about healing. I had nothing, no faith in healing, but I had faith in Jesus. But I wound up, I picked up some faith for healing along the way. Glory to God. And when I first started, it was lacking. But I kept going. And it kept growing. And it kept increasing. Glory to God. Now I get healed. Amen. Amen. Getting healed is good. Amen. Glory to God. Get, not getting sick at all is better. Amen. That's another area of faith. Faith for divine health. Faith for healing is good, but faith for divine health is better. I don't even get sick. Y'all know that's possible, right? It's possible to walk in this earth, live and die, and never have known sickness. We talk about we talking about that on Wednesday night, how to walk in divine health. That's a different area of faith. Amen. So now, the sixth thing that we need to know about faith, pay attention. Because I don't know that I've ever talked about this in my entire ministry life. Our faith can be drained. Did you know that faith can be drained? Turn to Matthew. Let's look at Matthew 14. And I want to give you six ways that faith can be drained. So the sixth thing we need to know about faith is that it can be drained. Now I want to give you six ways, six things that drain our faith. So now, this is a very well-read portion of Scripture. Verse uh, 
26 is where I'll start, Matthew 14, 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it's me, don't be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. I like Peter. Peter had some faults, but Peter like, Hey, if that's you and you walking on water, let's do it. And so Jesus was like, no, nah, this is too spiritual for you, Peter. This is just something that I do as the son of God. No, nah. he said, verse 29, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, now have you ever just imagined the, 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 how this played out? I mean, you on a boat and Jesus say, come. So you climb out the boat and you're looking at this water like, Amen. Peter had guts. And he had faith in what Jesus said. So Peter steps out of the boat, verse 33, and he walks on the water. Peter is walking on water just like Jesus. But get what happens next. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So in a matter of moments, Peter's faith went from strong to little. Because you, if you're walking on water, you got faith. Amen. Walking on water ain't for the faint of heart. It ain't for pretenders. It's for people with real faith. That, that all, everybody else was still in the boat. That's where your little, you know, that's where your, your pretender cry was. But in an instant, his faith dropped. You all see that? It dropped so much so that Jesus was like, well, you got little faith just a moment ago. But now it's little. Because faith can be drained. And the thing that drained Peter's faith was circumstances. So the first thing that drains faith is just circumstances of life. And I want to break these out into two categories. The first category is expected circumstances of life. Because if you read back, there was a storm when Jesus walked up to him. So it wasn't unexpected that the wind would rise up. Amen. So there are expected circumstances. You know, you, your car break down and you don't have enough money to pay for it. You know, I mean, it's, that's not, you know, cars break down, right? That's not unexpected. But it can drain our faith. Amen. You know, getting the cold, that's not unexpected to some people. It'd be unexpected to me, but it's, it's not unexpected to some people. It's like, you know, I mean, that happens, right? But it can drain our faith. In the world we live in today, getting COVID is not unexpected for some people, even Christians. But it, it, it drains, it just kind of drains it. Amen? Now, the second type of circumstance I want to look at Luke chapter 7. And I encourage you all, when you read the Bible, Read it like understanding that these are real people. Amen. We sometimes, we just, they're just words to us. These are people. If you read the Bible like these are real people, you'll get so much more out of it. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. Everybody in John, uh, Luke chapter 7. Amen. So in Luke chapter 7, um, verse 19. John called two of his disciples to him and sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Now, I want you to think about this for just a minute. This is, this is who we're talking about here? John the Baptist. What is he asking Jesus? Are you the Messiah? Now, remember, John was the one that said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
John was the one who baptized Jesus and saw the spirit coming up down on him in the shape of a dove and heard God say, this is my son, hear him. This same John is now saying, go ask him if he's the one that's coming or should I, should I be looking for somebody else? Something happened. His faith in Jesus was drained. Something happened to his faith to cause him to even question. Are you the Messiah? I know I said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I know I said that. But are you he that should come or is there somebody else? His faith was, was drained. Why was his faith drained? Unexpected circumstances. Because if you read back up into this, John sent them from prison. And so the, the Jewish people, their, their understanding was that the Messiah was going to come as a military leader and free them from Roman oppression. So, so he had no expectation that when the Messiah came, I'm going to wind up in jail. That's not, I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting Jesus, this is the Lamb of God, we're going to rise, get, get a military force up, we're going to squash the Romans, and we're going to live high. We, we, we live it. But now he's sitting in prison. I ain't expect that. And it made him doubt, really, maybe my faith in Jesus, yeah, maybe he's not who I thought he was. Anybody ever had unexpected stuff happen to you? Unexpected stuff will lay you out. See, the stuff that's expected, you kind of you, you ready for. But the stuff that you're not expecting, that'll tear your faith up more, faster than anything. So the first thing that drains our faith is expected life circumstances. The second is unexpected life circumstances. Amen. How many of y'all be honest enough to say, I had some unexpected stuff happen and it, it shook my faith. I wasn't strong in faith as I thought I was. Or it trained my faith and I found myself like, Lord, what is this? Where are you? When last week you was like, the Lord conquers all. <laughs> Am I the only one? Y'all too spiritual for that? If you ain't experienced that yet, keep living. Turn with me to, uh, let's go to 1 John. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. This is the third thing that drains faith. And we need to be aware that these things drain our faith. Amen. Or else we get ready for a battle and our faith drained and we didn't know it. 1 John, the third chapter, reads thus. I want to start in verse 20 of 1 John, chapter 3. It says, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God, and whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So I want you to pay attention to verse 20 because it says, I'm ver sorry, verse 21. If our heart does not condemn us, we have what? Confidence. You all know what one of the definitions for the word faith is? Confidence. The Greek word for faith is pistis. And if you look it up, one of the definitions is confidence. So this verse tells us that disobedience drains our faith. It drains our confidence. How many of y'all ever, ever prayed and you knew you wasn't really living right? And you know that prayer, it, wasn't, it was different. It was different. Then when you like, you, you, you know, your walk of obedience is tight and you like, I declare and it's mine and ain't nothing standing in my way. But you know, when you kind of walk in shaky, you kind of like, well, Lord. Um. Now, you might, when you're praying around the saints, you might pretend. 
But it says if our heart doesn't condemn us, amen, you praying out loud one way, but your heart, you praying something totally different. Your heart like, don't even, don't even fake the funk. Mm-mm. 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 And I've seen it. I've seen people, they, they live in foul and they praying all kind of stuff. I'm like, you don't even believe that. <laughs> you putting on a good show, but you don't believe that. You need to be like the Canaanite woman, like, can I just get some crumbs? <laughs> you cannot be walking in disobedience, consistent lifestyle disobedience, and have confidence when you ask God for anything. You just can't. Amen. People can pretend, but they don't, pretending don't make it work. Let's look at Luke chapter 22 so the first thing that drains faith is expected circumstances difficult circumstances the second thing is unexpected difficult circumstances nobody expects a doctor to say you got cancer that's unexpected the third thing is disobedience the fourth thing is found in Luke 22 And in the 22nd chapter of Luke, I want to look here at verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So Satan's attacks can drain faith. Amen. If Satan just keep coming at you and keep coming at you, that that taxes our faith. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It taxes our faith. we, 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 We expend faith just to stand. Amen. We expend that faith just to stand up to the attack. And so faith level drops because I expend it some. It's like a battery. When you use the battery, it drops. So attacks from Satan can drain our faith. Amen. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is the fifth thing that drains our faith. Five out of six. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Y'all with me so far? All right. 1 Timothy 4, I'm going to read just just the first verse. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So this is talking about people departing from the faith, right? So this is another one of those verses, them people that say you, once you get saved, you, you, you can't never not be saved. They departed from the faith. I'm just going to throw that in. I ain't going to charge you for that. But get it. Get this. They departed from the faith, so they had faith, but then they lost that faith and they departed. What caused them to lose the faith? What caused their faith to be drained? They gave heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. So false teaching, bad teaching, can sap our faith. Amen. You believe in God for healing, and then you turn on the TV, and some nincompoop up there talking about God. No, it's not God's will to heal people. And then that sucked people's faith right out. And so then if you do that, you need to come back here and talk to me, and I can set you straight. Because it is always God's will to heal all people. I can prove it to you seven ways to Sunday. I did a message some years ago, and it was like 15 scriptural proofs that it's God's will to heal everybody. And it wasn't no stretching stuff. It was just, boom, that's the Bible. But if you hear stuff like that, it'll drain your faith. If you're trying to believe God for some kind of financial need, and then you turn on the TV and somebody like, well, God wants his people poor. (laughs) 
and you were believing God for something, but then this man of God said, God wants people poor, and your faith just goes zoop. That's why you need to be careful what you listen to. And it's all kind of stuff out there under the title of Christian. I was talking to one of our members, and uh, they went to some Bible study, and the people was talking about God is a woman. <laughs> and it's mother God. And, and, and get this. this why, see, this is why you got to be careful. They had some scriptures, but they twisted them so bad they wasn't even recognizable. See, we got to be careful what we're giving our attention to. And sometimes people get messed up because they're listening to false teaching, doctrines of devils. Amen. So don't just be playing around with what you're listening to regarding the faith. I'm real careful about stuff I listen to. Amen. If, if you don't look right, I'm changing the channel. Uh, you just don't. You look, you look sus. That's what my daughter say, sus. You look sus. But I'm going to throw this in for you too if you don't know what's in here. Then they can tell you anything. Because remember, Satan used scripture. If you don't believe that, turn on some of these programs. He used scripture when he, when he dealt with Jesus. Oh yeah, Satan used the Bible. But if you don't know it, then you swallow it. And then your faith gets shipwrecked. Or you depart from the faith. Following Mother God. That's how people get caught up in these cults. They don't know what's in here. You know, it reminds me of uh, some years back, uh, David Koresh. Y'all remember that whole Waco, Texas thing? He, he said he was the Messiah returning. The Bible says that when he come back, he said if they say he over here or he over there, don't go. Because when he come back, everybody going to see. If you don't know that's in there, and somebody come tell you I'm Jesus and they give you some kind of reasons, maybe they do some, something that seems miraculous. If you don't know what's in here, that's how them people wound up following him. And they followed him to death. Y'all need to know what's in this book. Too many people getting, getting, getting misled, getting bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. Tell your neighbor, you need to know what's in here. No, uh-uh. Look at him, be like, I ain't playing. You need to know what's in here. I ain't playing. If you don't know what's in here, you don't know what wrong teaching is. You can't identify it. All right, I'm going to get off of that. I could stay there, but I'm going to keep moving. Y'all just know what's in this book. Amen. Listen, listen. Don't depend on somebody else to tell you what's in here. Do not depend on somebody else to tell you what's in here. Don't depend on me to tell you what's in here. Listen to what I say, and if I'm giving you scripture for it, believe it. But don't depend on me. You get in here for yourself. Don't believe something just because I said it. If it's not in here, don't believe it just because I said it. I'm going to tell you, don't believe it just because I said it. And I'm telling you, I, this, I get so frustrated with the saints. I've been sitting in places, and somebody say something that just, just ain't even Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. It ain't Bible. And you look around and people are like, mm, amen. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no. What are you doing? Am 
Am I, has anybody else ever been? Is I, am I the only one? You're like, you clearly don't know what the Bible says if you believe that. All right, I'm moving on for real now. Turn with me to Mark chapter 5. This is too important to lead to somebody else. And listen, God ain't going to buy what he told me. He's going to be like, what did I say? Well, Lord, but he said, I'll deal with him about what he said, but I'm dealing with you about what you did. Mark chapter 5. So Mark chapter 5, I want to start verse 35. It said, uh, while he was still speaking, Jesus was still speaking, some came to him from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? So Jesus was going to uh, Jairus' house to heal his daughter. And while he was on the way, some people came back from his house and was like, man, your daughter dead. So you might as well tell Jesus just, you know, he can go do something else. Right now, get what happens next. Verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, as soon as he heard it, he turned to the ruler of the synagogue and said, do not be afraid, only believe. Then the next thing he did is telling. The next thing he did in verse 37 is he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James and John. Now remember, at this point, there was a multitude because this happened right after the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment. And remember what his disciples said, it's a multitude thronging you. How we know who touched you, dude? So this multitude is still there when they came and told Jairus, your daughter's dead. And Jesus was like, turn to him immediately. Look, don't let that shake you. Keep rolling with me. And then he turned to this whole multitude and was like, y'all can't come any further. Y'all can't come any further. Now, let's keep reading. Then he came to the house, verse 38, of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a, a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why do you make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleep. Verse 40, they ridiculed him. But what Jesus did was this. He put them all outside. And he took the father and the mother, and those who were with him was Peter, James, and John. So he come in there, and these people, understandably so, the girl dead. And so the fact that they're wailing and, and mourning, that's normal. But then Jesus said, uh-uh, you don't need to do all this. I got this covered. And they start dogging him out. It's due. <laughs> and so he's like, uh, y'all got to get to stepping. So now let's analyze this. Two instances, he stopped people from being with him. The reason is because the unbelief and doubt of other people will drain your faith. It will just suck it right out of you. You know them, oh, oh, it's bad. Oh, oh, the doctor told me I got this. Oh, I had a cousin had that. He died. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you know, they told me I had coronavirus. Oh, I had that. It was bad. Oh, man, I lost this, and I didn't have that, and I got the other thing. I prayed, but ain't nothing happened. Good luck. If Jesus got to separate from the doubters, you're going to have to cut them loose, too. He did it because 
it will, it will drain your faith. And I need your faith to, to raise your daughter from the dead. I need it. And if you keep hanging around these folks, it's going to drain it, and I won't be able to do what I want to do, which is heal her and raise her from the dead. So the final, the sixth thing that drains faith is other folks. There's some folks you can't afford to be around if you're working on something. Hey Amen. You working on healing. There's some folks you're going to have to cut off. I, we, hey, I'll catch up with you once I get healed. Right now, I can't, I can't, you, you sucking the life out of my faith. <laughs> Always talking negative. Always talking about how bad it is. You get a note from the car people, they coming to repossess your car. And you telling your friend, yeah, I need you to pray, they kind of repossess. Man, I remember when they repossessed my car. That was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't even let you get your stuff out the trunk. I'm still catching the bus, girl. Oh, no, I don't need to know that. That's not what I need right now. Amen. Drains faith. So number five. What's number five? I'm testing you. Oh, and I'm sorry. The fifth most important thing you need to know. Faith grows. The sixth most important thing is your faith can be drained, and we just went through six things that drain faith. Now, the seventh thing that we, you want to know, the most important thing you want to know about faith is found in Romans, the 10th chapter. And I'm going to start wrapping this up because I'm running out of time. So in Romans, chapter 10, I want to look at and I want to read. Let's read together. Verse 17 of Romans 10. If you're in Romans 10, say, I'm there, man. I'm there. I said, I'm there, man. Don't follow instructions. Let's read verse 17 together. Ready? Read. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The seventh important thing you need to know about faith is it comes by hearing God's word. Amen. If you don't hear God's word, it's impossible to have faith. And that's why I said when I first got saved, I had faith in Jesus, but I had no faith for healing because I had never heard that Jesus was a healer. I never heard that himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness, and with his stripes I was healed. I never heard that. Amen. Now look back up in verse 13 of Romans 10. It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But it goes on to say, how then shall they call on him? in whom they've not believed. In other words, if you don't believe in him, you're not going to call on him. But it goes on to say, but how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? It's impossible to have faith for something that you've not heard about. I think about the woman with the issue, in blood, uh, woman with the issue of blood. If you look at Luke chapter 7. Um, is it Luke chapter 7? Luke chapter 8. And it gives you the account of the woman with the issue of blood. And the Bible says about her, it says, when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind him. So before she came up to him to get healed, she heard. Well, what did she hear? Well, see, if you go back to Luke chapter 5, it talks about how people were pressing about him and touching his clothes because power was coming out of him. So she heard, oh, wait a minute. There's people over there who's touching him and power was coming out? And they were getting healed. Oh, I'm about to go touch him. But she heard. So faith, we, we obtain faith through hearing. And the level that we hear determines the level of faith that we have. Now, that needs to sink in. Because, see, if you don't hear him, if you're not hearing a lot, then your level of faith is, is, is tied to what you hear. 
So this puts a premium on hearing the word of God. That's why these 25, I've been, I've been walking with Jesus for 25 years. I can probably count on two hands the number of times I miss service. And it's only been because we've been out of town and we couldn't find a, a church that we thought, you know, you go on vacation, you're like, mm, you know, you don't want to just slide in anywhere. But if I'm here, I'm coming to church. I come to, I come to midweek service and I don't come because I'm a preacher. I was coming way before and I'll be coming way after. I come because faith comes by hearing. And I listen to the word of God outside of church because faith comes by hearing. I need to hear. I can't afford to, I can't afford to stop. And if I can't afford to stop, neither can you. I read my Bible because faith comes through the word. Amen. So, so the seventh thing that we need to know is that we need the word for faith to be built. And the more word you get, the more faith is built. But the more word you get in an area builds faith in that area. Amen. So if I'm hearing about finances, that's not really giving me faith for healing. It's giving me faith for finances. So the thing that you're working on, you need to be hearing that thing. Now, I want to bring all of this together. I want to give you guys a, a picture of this. Is that all right? Amen. I'm going to put this over here so the streaming people can have the best shot at it possible. All right. So I'm going to go behind here and I'm going to get my stuff. And these are my faith buckets. All right. This is my faith for healing bucket. Somebody say faith for healing. This is my faith for finance bucket. Somebody say faith for finances. And this is my general faith, my faith in Jesus bucket. Somebody say faith in Jesus. So we already talked about you can have faith in different areas. And so think of them as buckets. Right? So now, we're dealing with Christians. So the faith in Jesus bucket got something in it. Because you're a Christian. By faith, you are saved. Right? So here's the faith for Jesus, the faith bucket for Jesus. All right? We heard the word, we believed it, we got saved, that's our faith bucket. But hearing about Jesus puts nothing in these other buckets. So we talked about the fact that you can have faith in one area, but not in another. Right? But now, let's say you're going to church, and... You come, let's say you come to Wednesday night, and they doing a, we're doing a series on healing. All right, so now we're hearing some healing stuff. Now get this, any word contributes to this. Anything you hear, that's the word. But if it's on healing, it also, it's also putting in this bucket. Amen? And I'm teaching it, so... <laughs> ah. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. Now you come in the Sunday morning, you come in the Wednesday, and you just, it's pouring. It's pouring. It's, it's building. Amen? Amen. And then Pastor Cox, he do something on finances. Uh, I don't want to leave that because if I spill this. All right, we're doing something on finances, so now we got our finance. No! <laughs> How did that happen? Don't be laughing at me. So now we're going in our faith bucket for finances, right? Pastor Cox really anointed on that. Amen. And it's also putting some stuff over in this bucket too. Amen. All right. Dang. Don't nobody, don't nobody put this out on the internet. <laughs> I know how to edit. So we're coming in and we're getting, we're getting the word, right? All right. So now we got our faith in Jesus is 
decent, or if we got some faith for healing, faith for finances, kind of shaky. But we also got life happening. It's draining. It's draining. So you got a call and sister so-and-so died. She was a strong Christian and she died. Now it's like, ooh, that's draining my faith. Amen. But you don't let that daunt you. You just keep hearing. You just keep hearing. I, I, know, I know that took something away, but I'm putting something else back in. Amen. And as we hear the word, it just builds and builds. And this is why... Our faith has to grow because it's always being, it's being expended. It's being used and things are steadily taking it away. Steadily taking it out. Now what happens if you keep getting it taken out but you're not putting nothing back in? It's just coming out and nothing's coming back in. Or it's coming out every day but you only hearing on Sunday. Sit real still and look straight ahead. Don't nobody know we're talking about you. See, that's why we can't, we can't take for granted the word of God because it's building, it's filling up the faith bucket. And so when you consider your approach to the word of God and life, those six things that drain faith, where is your bucket? Where is your bucket? And people think, well, I, I ain't missed church in 20 years. I'm at church every Sunday in 20 years. You've been living life every day, every day for 20 years. And so faith has been being drained, and you've been drained every day, and you're filling it up once a week. So is it possible to come to church every Sunday for 20 years and be weak in faith? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you don't believe it, I could point some people out. I ain't going to do it. Oh, Jesus. So where is our faith bucket? And it's not just one bucket. Your faith in Jesus bucket could be strong, but your faith for healing bucket could be lacking. Now, what happens if your faith for healing bucket is way up here and you get sick? I can handle that. But what happens if your bucket is here and you get sick? Don't mean you don't believe in Jesus. But this may not be enough to get you healed for what you need to get healed of. This may be get you healed from the sniffles. <laughs> but what if you got something bigger than the sniffles? And so, so I'm encouraging us all to keep all the buckets as full as we can get them. So that whatever comes our way, we're ready for it. And never forget that life drains faith. Just walking in this world drains faith. And so we need to be constantly replenishing. We need to be constantly pouring in and getting more and getting more. Amen? So that's all we have for you today, saints. Until next time, this is Pastor Noah Willis reminding you, God is good. He has an amazing plan for your life. Jesus is Lord, and your victory is in the Word of God. Taking back the land he's promised